Coming up on Mountain News this morning, if you're a Tesla owner and find yourself driving through Southeast Kentucky, you may see a few extra charging stations. And changes are coming to one Kentucky County in hopes of fixing bottleneck traffic. Dedicated to Eastern and Southern Kentucky, this is WYMT Mountain News This Morning. Welcome back. The time is now 533. Let's check in with Brandon Robinson for a look at your forecast this morning. Well, Olivia, things are looking a bit soggy for some folks this morning, but again, the rain should be gone as we get later into the daytime hours. That's some good news for those Black Friday shoppers. Unfortunately, they're going to have to deal with some of that rain this morning. Let's go back to live pinpoint Doppler radar, seeing a little bit of rain in, from Pike County, kind of in a line all the way back over toward Jackson County and Rockcastle County. It'd be just a little heavier band. I'm going to zoom in here right fast because I think I see something that looks just a little bit heavier here in Lee and Owsley and Jackson counties. Yep, right there near the Sturgeon community over in Owsley County back toward Cow Creek and just east of McKee. So again, if you're in that area, you're probably seeing just a little bit of heavier rain band there. Buffalo Mountain here in Perry County, you can see a little bit of raindrops on the camera. 52 up there here in town in Hazard as well. 52 in Jackson. 50, a popular number. You got London, Somerset, Monticello, Williamsburg, and Logan. And of course, 55 are warm spots out there. Pikeville and uh, Prestonsburg. Very warm day overall for this late in November. So we're going to be seeing a very nice forecast after the morning. Showers will continue for a little while. Temperatures will actually be their coolest between 8 and 9 o'clock this morning. And then the skies will clear. Could we see some late day sunshine? Only time will tell. Olivia. Thanks, Brandon. Shoppers are hitting the stores early today, fueled by yesterday's feast. Taking on the lines for a little discount, some of those folks are saving their pennies at JCPenney in Pike County, where WYMT's Buddy Forms, Forbes joins us live this morning. Hey, Buddy. Good morning again, Olivia. How are you? Yeah, before the rain started, the weather was kind of the perfect for waiting around, and a lot of people were waiting around here outside of JCPenney in Coal Run, waiting for those Black Friday deals. And as we've seen, a lot of businesses have switched up how Black Friday looks with online sales, earlier sales, or just kind of getting rid of the day altogether. But some are continuing the tradition. Here, people have been waiting for hours, chatting, planning those shopping strategies, and saying it's nice to get a jump on the holiday shopping list. Now, the doors open here at 5 o'clock, but there's still plenty of time to check out those deals here. But unlike these shoppers, I did not come prepared, so I'm maybe going to go look for some deals on some coffee and check back in with you guys later. In Pikeville, Buddy Forbes, WIMT Mountain News. Thank you, Buddy. Small businesses across the region are also getting in on the Black Friday action this year, so shoppers have plenty of places to find gifts. But in some more tragic news, a family is grieving after one person was killed in an early morning house fire on Thanksgiving Day. The coroner identified the woman as 76-year-old Joel Lester. Samantha Valentino reports. Don't look, my mom go ahead. Come on. Just hours before Lisa knew planned to cook Thanksgiving dinner for her family, their home filled with smoke. I came out, this place was just boiling with smoke, and then very quickly it just blew the windows out and started consuming the fire. Lisa, her boyfriend, and her son were able to escape the home, but her mother, 76-year-old Jewel Lester, was not. We all went around and tried to bust her out of the front. There was no, she was gone. And it's a huge loss for this, this community. Lester was well known and well loved in Burnside. Most people know her. She, she used to, before she fell and broke her hip, she used to walk everywhere. And everybody knows her by her walking everywhere. Lester had dementia and a bad hip, which is why she couldn't escape the home on her own. She and her dog died in the fire. He, she had a dog and, and he wouldn't leave her side. He stayed with her all the time. Lisa says they lost everything. The community really needs to come together and help them with food, with clothes, with school supplies, with um, just socks, underwear, anything. Molden is hopeful she can use social media to help her neighbors. In Pulaski County, Samantha Valentino, WYMT Mountain News. Pulaski County Coroner Clyde Strunk says Jewel Lester's body has been taken to the medical examiner's office in Frankfurt for an autopsy. The cause of the fire is still unknown. 
In Rockcastle County, firefighters battled a forest fire yesterday morning. Take a look at this. Officials with Livingston Fire and Rescue say it sparked around 6 o'clock yesterday morning on Sand Hill Road. Eight firefighters responded. You can see it torched a lot of brush, but it was contained quickly. Thankfully, no one was hurt. The funeral, funeral arrangements for former Kentucky Governor John Y. Brown Jr. are set. Brown died last Monday at the age of 88. A public vis visitation will take place next Tuesday, November 29th at the Kentucky Capitol Rotunda, where he will lie in state. A private memorial service will be at 3 p.m. on Wednesday, November 30th at the Capitol, but, will, but it will air on KET. Brown served as a governor from 1979 to 1983. Just in time for the holiday season, the Salvation Army of Kentucky kicked off its iconic Christmas red kettle campaign. Governor Andy Bashir declared December love beyond Christmas month. The governor encouraged people across the Commonwealth to support their neighbors in need this holiday season. To donate or learn more about the Salvation Army, you can find this story over on our website, WYMT.com. And what is being called the largest distilled spirits related investment on record in Kentucky, a Louisville based bourbon company will spend $600 million to expand into Laurel County. Governor Andy Bashir and officials with Sazerac Company announced the move on Thursday. The Sazerac Company is acquiring the 198-acre Rowland Acres Industrial Park from the London Laurel County Economic Development Authority to construct nearly 20 new barrel storage warehouses, which will create up to 50 full-time jobs. For Tesla owners who will be traveling through southeast Kentucky, there are now more charging stations to utilize. The London Laurel County Tourism Visitor Center had Tesla charging stations for several years, but have recently added more charging spots to serve more people. Kelly Burton with the Tourism Commission says these new charging stations can help to bring even more people to Laurel County, inviting them to stay and enjoy what the area has to offer. When I come by on the weekends, there's usually still a waiting uh, line to get into charge. And when I visit from people, they're from Chicago, they're from Michigan, they're from California, they're from all over. And because of the charging stations, they're coming here to charge and discovering London, Kentucky for the first time. Burton says because the charging stations were experiencing so much traffic, Tesla reached out to install more. She says she predicts the stations will be even busier than usual this weekend. We have a traffic alert out of Boyd County. New traffic changes are in place on Route 60 from Princess to Colton and a Kentucky 5 intersection detour. However, as Kimberly Kiki shares, there is some good news for drivers in the area. Bottleneck traffic is something most drivers plan ahead for when it comes to driving US 60. But there's something else drivers need to keep an eye out for. It does look a lot different. New lane shifts and a detour for State Route 5 are in place through the four mile widening project between Princess to Colton. Should be seamless as people come into the work zone. Uh, however, people should be aware that as they as they move through, you could you know the traffic could shift uh, to the left and to the right depending on which direction you're going. All of Kentucky Five traffic will be detoured west using Princess Drive and a temporary intersection while the existing one is closed for reconstruction. When we're finished with the configuration of this highway, it's going to be a a, a three lane style highway with center turn lanes and right turn lanes to separate that traffic flow and improve safety, uh, improve congestion, you know, make sure that we don't have backups like we've seen in the past. And Kentucky Transportation Cabinet says work is expected to wrap up in a year or so. Kimberly Keggy, WSAZ News Channel 3, Boyd County. All traffic changes will stay in place through the winter and into next spring as construction continues. Just ahead this morning, if you watch this year's Macy's Day Thanksgiving Parade from home, you may have noticed the absence of a notable face. Stay with us. More news is on the way next. I sure noticed them missing yesterday. And uh, again, the forecast for the long holiday weekend could feature a little bit of everything except snow and cold. I'll have the latest in about three minutes.